Switch connections, 404.2, three and four way switching. I just got a guy that sent me a book on switching. Yes. A book on switching. I, 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 I still have it. I just, I, maybe I gave it to you. Yeah, I, he did a great job on the book. But it's, I, okay, but it was a great job on the book. He really did a great job, I have to say. So, but you know, three and four way switching is, you have a lot of different combinations, right, that yep. you can go through. So I'm not going to get into all the combinations. There was a lot here. of tribal knowledge in that book. And there's a, you know, you ever hear that joke? How do you get a light to turn on from five stories, you know, in a stairway? Long pull chain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard when I started. I didn't know the answer either. All right, here we go. So all three and four-way switching must be done with the ungrounded conductor, meaning you cannot switch the neutral. We're not going to get into the wiring of this because we covered this already back in 200, yeah. probably 200.6 on the identification of the neutral conductor where you're having it conductors in a cable. So you can't switch the neutral. Uh, now, I'm not quite sure. A neutral conductor isn't required to be in the same raceway or cable with travelers and switch legs. Oh, this is an exception. Right. So do we even have a pitch? Yeah, so there's, what do we got here? We have, okay, so there's no neutral here. Right. That's what I was telling you in the last video. I've wired, you know, the captive three ways wrong my entire life because, the, you know, I've always used the white wire as the point. So on one side, I'm doing it wrong, and on the other side, I'm doing it right. But in this case here, this rule is just simply saying, in your cable, you don't have to have a neutral in the cable. Exactly. For non-metallic sheet, does it say non-metallic sheet cable? Let's take a look at 404.2a because I'm wondering if that only applies to non-metallic raceways or non-metallic wiring methods. 404.3, was it 3? 404.2a. The exception. Oh, no, 2A. 2A, oh. yeah, there you, there you go. Three and four-way switches shall be wired, so I'll switch it on in ungrounded conduct, wearing a metal, oh, there, wearing metal raceways or metal armor cables, wiring method between so that shall be in accordance with 320A, and 320A is talking about inductive heating to make sure that you have the canceling of the conductors, and then the exception is just simply saying that you don't need to have a neutral <coughs> conductor um, Switch with it. in switches. And there's a note here that I really would like to, uh, I guess we can talk about this, and that is that 4042C, all right, let's, we're going to come back to this and see if I can do something with this graphic. So I'm going to get to this, come back later on. Yes. Just a, a quick note, and, you know, periodically we talk about people and EMF and all this kind of stuff. You know, I know that you and I had an experience where we were kind of checking EMF levels for people that are sensitive to that. And we discovered that actually this scenario and one other scenario are probably the biggest culprits of just causing EMF fields, which can affect data speeds. Uh, some people think it affects your health. That type of thing. So I just wanted to bring that out here. It's probably not the ideal uh, design. No, but this one right here doesn't have a field because I have current coming in. I have current returning. That one was five times field instead of 20 times field. No, no. This was yeah. no different field than any other two wire. No, that one was when the light was off. If you remember, that one had five times field. So it was only when the light was on the field went down. Okay. Oh, okay. We won't get into that. Yeah. Unless we get lunchtime and we talk, we might have to yeah, come back. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go now. Switching of the neutral conductor. Okay. A permanently reignited white wire within a cable can be used as the ungrounded conductor for switching purposes in accordance with 207C1. So this was really 207C1. All switching must be done with the ungrounded conductor. So you can't switch the neutral. Right. Not quite sure. Yeah, okay, I know why you don't switch it. We're not going to go there. You switch the hot wire. Neutral at switches. This is the third cycle that they've attempted to get the language correct. And I think after three cycles, I think they have it correct. Let's read the language here. Let, let's stop before we get here. And uh, we need to change, Mike, that, uh, that switch on there and put an electronic switch. 
through 2011, 2014, now that 2017 has it correct, is looking to get a neutral conductor to switch locations in occupiable and habitable rooms. In other words, where people would be because of the energy code. They want somebody walking in the room, the electronic device to sense it, and then to take some kind of action one way or the other. The electronic devices should not, not be presenting any current on the equipment grounding conductor because the device to be responsive, it needs to have 120 volts. I mean, it needs to have current coming in and current going out so that it can, it can sense. Now, the current that it takes to operate these devices are about one half of a milliampere. So it doesn't take much, but you still need to have a hot and a neutral to make it work. So they're trying to get electronic devices to be required to have line to neutral connection only, not line to equipment grounding conductor. But it doesn't do any good to have devices required to be line to neutral connection for wiring if there are not neutrals and switches. So if you think about this, where people are going to be in the room, it's going to be sleeping, uh, bathrooms, it's going to be kitchens, it's going to be dining rooms, it's going to be garages, it's going to be office spaces, and, and those type of locations, and laundry rooms, uh, and storage rooms. We're looking to have the ability to have occupancy sensors line the neutral connection in there. Closets and storage rooms, you don't have to have an occupancy sensor. You can just leave the light on all the time, okay? So that's not a problem at all. Maybe not a good idea. So that's the concept. Now let's read the rule here. Switches controlling line and neutral lighting loads must have a neutral installed at a switch serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, or rooms suitable for human habitation or occupancy, such as defined in the applicable building code, which is what I described <coughs> to you earlier, where people are going to be, not storage rooms and closets. So if we change this switch here to a uh, electronic switch that required a neutral, then we would actually have the neutral connected to the switch itself. So, now, when you get to three-way and four-way switching, which is going to be where? Where's my three-way and four-way? Am I missing a three-way and four-way in here? No. Am I missing it? Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. Mike, let's highlight this so, we can, so I can see that there. Maybe highlight the whole kitchen. Okay. So, when you have three-way and four-way switching, where the entire area of the room is visible from one or more of the switches, only one switch requires a neutral conductor. So... This switch right here, you know, Mike, let's do this. Let's make an S with a, with a subscript N. You with me, my, Brian? S with a subscript N. We'll start doing that in any of our, on our blueprint drawings. And the N means what? Neutral. You need a neutral. Neutral. So it'd be neutral, neutral, neutral. That'd be a neutral, neutral. Now, only one of these two devices, right, require a neutral connection. Because it's an occupancy sensor. It doesn't matter which one is going to sense it. That's the reason why only one of the two. A neutral conductor is not required at a switch device box if the raceway has sufficient area to, be, to add a neutral conductor. So the requirement of having a neutral conductor does not apply if it's run in a raceway. Because the theory is that if you someday decide to put in a neutral conductor, I mean, if you a device that needed a neutral, you have a raceway system to pull it in. And I know the people in the Chicago area are saying, that's why we run EMT. That's why we run metal raceways. And so another reason to run a metal raceway. Now, if you're going to use non-metallic or non-metallic, a non-raceway non <coughs> wiring method, and you can have access to the top, well, then you can, add a neutral, you can add a neutral conductor by adding a cable in there. So therefore, a neutral is not required at that switch location. That's, let's say from an attic space. Well, the same thing applies to the basement. If you can get to a switch later on from the basement, then you do not need a neutral at that switch. So let's think about what we're talking about. We're talking about there's no way without damaging the building structure to add a neutral to a switch. Then during the initial construction, a neutral conductor must be located at a switch and all those rooms, <coughs> habitable rooms and occupiable rooms. Brian? Well, you know, Eric and I were having a conversation about this last night, and he's like, yeah, I think they should have a neutral at every box, and I was kind of fighting with him, but to be totally honest with you, the more I'm thinking about it, you know, you say without damaging the finish of the building, and I'm just sitting here thinking about how many times I've accidentally put a flex bit out the side of somebody's wall trying to get a wire down a wall. 
you know, we may eventually need to just, with all the electronic switches that are coming out, I, I may, Eric, I think you were right. I think we just need to have a neutral in all the switch boxes. I mean, that, that was our practice as a company. I know that's not a code requirement, but maybe we need to start going that way as you time goes on. Let's try a public input. Yep, see what happens. Make it simple. <clears throat> because it really is a lot easier to put the neutral at the switch right now than it yes. is. Because, listen, are people really going to come back and put neutrals later on? Listen, they had, to do this to get the, they had to do this to get the rule in, right? Now right. that the rule's in, it actually works, and we understand what's going on down the line. Let's just make it not so complicated, and that every switch has to have a neutral. Whether you're going to use it or not in the future, it doesn't really matter. There might be a slight cost impact, but it's going to be minimal. In it the really long run, is. it's going to be a lot less expensive. Yes. Michael? Yes. It, it would take several hours, I would think, a couple of hours, two to three hours possibly, to fish in that neutral to a box. By the time you get a crew dispatched out there, their travel time to get there, their time to get up in the attic, see where they're working, try to measure everything out, I just see it being a nightmare. Well, here's the deal. I, I agree with them. I think we should have them. Let's do it on the, the rough end. And they're not gonna cheap. they're not gonna do it. They're gonna come back and put a switch that doesn't require a neutral and they're gonna be taking current, putting it on the equipment grounding conductor. Yeah, exactly. And we'll find out how dangerous That's it is. That's what's that gonna that happen. Slide. Eric, and then David? <laughs> Right. I, I made this proposal for the 2017 code. Of course, it was rejected, or public input. I'll make another public input in 2020. I think there's a little bit more substantiation this time because of the uh, a code, I forget which one it is, about the coming not putting, not putting current on the grounding conductor. Well, we're going to be at the panel, and we're going to submit a public input. You will also. And so, therefore, we will. I think when you're there and you can explain to, mm -hmm. the, to the committee what you're trying to achieve, Generally, it's going to go a little bit more better received. I'm assuming me speaking is good too. I'm not saying. Okay, David. Being a rope puller, I, it kind of sounds like a plug for the for the NM industry uh, for to run a four wire cable down to your dead end three ways. Yeah. The, and David's saying that you, they, you can NM cable with four conductors. Yep. Right? right. And have a neutral there. Not that big of a deal. It's really not. I can add one more argument. Perhaps is that. Very few homeowners are going to hire a professional to do this, and a lot of them are going to do their own, and you're going to run into a lot more bad work and dangerous work by you, the you, homeowner. That's a really good point. A homeowner, yeah. gen, uh, not generally, but I mean, there's a higher probability of a homeowner changing a switch, and they're going to make that connection. There is no neutral there. Exactly. They're going to have a problem now. A neutral is not connected. Where are they going to connect the neutral to? They're going to connect it to the to equipment grounding conductor. Exactly. There is no option because the code is going to be required in 2020 that you have line to neutral devices. So you're going to see suppliers, they're not going to be carrying line to neutral and line to line. I mean, a line to the ground anymore than they have to. They're going to try to sell the most current product. And of course, now they're going to connect it to the neutral. In other words, the light's going to work, everything's going to be fine, except we're going to have that's a great argument and yeah, right. why the practicality is that the customer, the product is going to be in line of neutral devices. They're going to connect it to the equipment grounding conductor. They're going to make it work. And handymen are going to be going that way. And that's a problem. Exactly. Beautiful comment. Man, whenever you talk, honestly, if you are able to watch my face when Heinz talks, I just smile. I just <laughs> well, smile you. because you're just so graceful and you, you speak so well. And thank you so much for being here. Well. Thank All right. You. Well, you're not shooting at me. Now, a neutral is not required at a switch if your switch is going to be controlling a receptacle. Because you can't put occupancy sensors to control a receptacle. And you're like, you know, just put a neutral every single thing and don't worry about whether you're controlling a receptacle or not. Okay, I got it. Um, now, effective January 1st, 2020, the neutral conductor must be run to any replacement switch. Here's the replacement, Michael. Okay, we're, we're supposed to put it in there. But we don't have to under these exceptions or these conditions. And now 2020 comes around. Now the device is supposed to be having, now you have to have a neutral run to the replacement switch. And we talked about the ramifications. That's probably not going to happen. And then we're going to have the hazards of Heinz you just so beautifully brought out. So now you can see. But that's, so 2020 service work supposed to use line the neutral switches. 